Good to see you, Peter. Thanks a lot. First of all, I want to thank to Joe for the invitation. As he said before, it's the fourth time for me coming here to New Orleans. This trip was a little bad for 18 hours, but it doesn't matter. Uh, our work is about the anticoagulation of the valve replacement, for instance, aortic valve replacement. Uh, it happened uh, at least eight years ago when we started to think about what shall we do with our old patients. As we are cardiovascular department too, we didn't like uh, administer warfarin and coumadin for all these older patients and we were used to handle this uh, clopidogrel for our vascular patients. And so we had the idea to make a study and administer it for the people who have got a biological aortic valve. Uh, I must say some sentence about the Austrian rules. If you want to make a prospective analysis, there is an ethic commission in Austria. And so you have to go there and you have to present your work and then they decide if you can make it or not. But at this time, the commission said, it may be your work is quite good, but you have to pay the insurance. And the company, which uh, was delivering uh, Clopidogrel Grill at that time, which was the only one, they were not able to pay it. So it ended that we threw the guy from the company out of our house and said, we don't want to see you again. And we uh, decided to make it uh, not uh, prospective randomized, but to start from one day to the other. But before we made this, we looked into the literature and we found some papers like this. You see, guideline on antiplatelet and anticoagulation management in cardiac surgery. So we were not the pioneers in this field, but maybe we have been the first. And one part of this paper, if you read, you can see after the tissue, aortic valve replacement, and in the absence of other indications for anticoagulation, antiplatelet therapy alone is adequate. And we found other papers like this. Cerebral microembolism after bioprosthetic aortic valve replacement. A comparison between warfarin and aspirin only. So we decided not to administer aspirin, but we decided to administer Clopidogrel, but we want to keep off warfarin from our patients. This is a, a paper from on Ontario, and there is another paper from the colleagues in Italy, which is our southern neighbor from Austria. And the, in this paper, they compared warfarin to aspirin after biological valve replacement. So as I said before, we are not the pioneers for this method. Another paper, is early anticoagulation with warfarin necessary about valve replacement, bioprosthetic valve replacement? You see the objectives, you see the data, you see female, male, hypertension, all the risk factors, and you see there is no, that, that it's no, not so good to give warfarin, it could be better to give aspirin or clopidogrel. Now, what about the guidelines? The American Heart Association and the European Society of Cardiology, they say administered warfarin for at least three months with an ENR of 2.5, and afterwards you can switch to aspirin. If sinus rhythm is continuous, of course. These are the different models we use in our unit. You all know them on the left the Carpenter Edwards, on the right, the Sorin. All these are standard biological prosthesis. What says the American College of Cardiology? There are small studies and after, and we'll speak about this later, after TAVR, 10% were given aspirin, Clopidogrel and Marcoma is a triple therapy, which 
in our point of view, it's a little, it's a little bit heroic and could be dangerous even for older patients. So, as we all know, the era of TAVI has, has become. And for instance, in our other uh, country, now, uh, Germany, which is north of Austria, nowadays more than 50% of all aortic valve replacement is made by TAVI or PAVR. What do they use afterwards? They give a dual therapy, clopidogrel and aspirin, for at least three months, and most groups, six months. I also think that you all know these models, which are seen in the pictures. So, what about our data? As I said before, we started in the year 2009, and between this and the year 2015, we had 1,230 patients. The mean age was 72 years, uh, female 500, male 700, the youngest guy was 51 and the oldest was 89. 10% had persistent or paroxysmal atrial fibrillation of flutter, so they went out of the study. We also saw some strokes, as everybody knows, and everybody sees it in his unit. Uh, we uh, we made a decision that we said that perioperative stroke is in between the first 48 hours after surgical procedure. And in this group we had 17 patients, which means 1.5%. You see the column of the risk factors. Nearly 50% had a body mass index more than 20. 30% uh, hypertonus, 10% diabetes, renal failure, COPD, combined procedures. For us, it doesn't matter if a patient has aortic valve replacement alone or cabbage too, because the anticoagulation for us is the same one. The right column, about 10 to 15 percent, sees and shows you that we have also made a hemisternotomy uh, nearly since uh, three or four years. In my opinion, it's, it's a method which you need not do, but if you like it, and if you're able and you have good nerves, it could be quite nice also for older people. What, what about our post-operative management? After removing all the blood drains and the pacemaker leads, we're starting with clopidogrel, which is about, in a normal way, on the fifth day after operation. Uh, we administer enoxaparin, until this mission, it depends on the weight of the patients. For the average Austrian, he has maybe 80 kilos. You give two times 40 milligram a day. We made echocardiography one week after the operation, so we can say nearly before this mission, and three months after surgery. And from that point of view, we switch to aspirin. What about our results? We couldn't find any embolism of the prosthesis. We found five cases of endocarditis postoperatively. One patient died after undergoing redo operation, and we didn't find any intracerebral hemorrhagia. So, in our conclusion, in our cohort of patients with a relative high mean age, and a big summary of a lot of comorbidities is clopidogrel an excellent alternative therapy after biological aortic valve replacement. And you will also find better compliance and lower costs. Thank you.